Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about Secure Digital or SD cards. These were first launched back in 1999 and are now available with many different capacity types, speed classes and bus interfaces. New SD card standards have also been announced and so in this video I'm going to explain all current and forthcoming SD card specifications as well as running some performance tests. Twenty years ago the first SD cards were what we now call standard size. Smaller mini SD cards then arrived in 2003 followed by even smaller micro SD cards in 2005. Today, mini SD cards are rare, with most devices using either a standard or a micro SD card, and newer SD card specifications not supporting mini SD. All SD card form factors are available in a range of capacity types. The first of these is SD, which supports cards up to 2GB in size. Next comes SDHC, or Secure Digital High Capacity, for cards over 2GB and up to 32GB. After that we have SDXC, or Secure Digital Extended Capacity cards, with a size over 32GB up to 2TB. In June 2018 the SD Card Association also announced a fourth capacity type called SDUC, or Secure Digital Ultra Capacity. This will support cards over 2 terabytes and up to 128 terabytes, potentially offering a mind-blowing quantity of storage in something the size of a fingernail. Most SD cards are labelled with up to three different types of speed class, all of which indicate the minimum sequential write speed that a card is capable of. The initial SD card speed classes were class 2, class 4, class 6 or class 10, with a number appearing in the letter C and the classes indicating a minimum write speed of 2, 4, 6 or 10 megabytes a second. Next to be introduced was the UHS or ultra high speed speed class, which indicates if a card can sustain either a 10 or 30 megabytes per second sequential write speed by placing a number 1 or 3 inside a letter U. Most recently SD cards have started to be labelled with a video speed class, with the figure 6, 10, 30, 60 or 90 appearing after a letter V. As we can see, the video speed class can indicate a minimum sustained write speed of 6, 10, 30, 60 or 90 megabytes per second. It's also worth noting that manufacturers often label their cards with a claimed speed. Here, for example, are two SanDisk Extreme Pro cards with labelled speeds of 95 and 170 megabytes per second. But both cards are only classified as U3 and V30, indicating a minimum write speed of 30 megabytes per second. It is, in fact, only when we look to the box with a 64 gigabyte card that we can see its claimed speed of 95 megabytes per second is a potential up to or maximum speed. And we have to turn the box over to discover that 95 megabytes a second is a potential read rather than write maximum. You may also have noticed that this box labels the card as 633 times. Such multiplication rates are not part of the official SD Card Association specifications, but are often cited by manufacturers. What they indicate is how the potential speed of a card compares to a standard speed or times one CD-ROM drive, which can transfer data at about 0.15 megabytes per second. So here, the 633 times figure means that the card may operate 633 times faster than the slowest CD-ROM drives. Finally, it's worth noting that some SD cards are labelled with a fourth application performance class, which can either be class 1, which is denoted as A1, or class 2, which is denoted as A2. Here, the minimum sustained write speed is 10 megabytes per second, just as it is for a class 10 U1 or V10 card. However, A1 and A2 cards are also certified for a minimum number of IOPS, or input output operations per second. 
High IOPS values are important when an SD card is used as a computer or smartphone's operating system or application drive, which is increasingly common. Today, SD cards and devices are available with several different bus interface standards. These relate to the speed of electronics used to transfer data and are an interface hardware specification that is quite distinct from an SD card's speed class. At least in theory, right now, there are four different SD card bus interface standards, known as High Speed, UHS-1, UHS-2 and UHS-3. These offer potential maximum data transfer speeds of up to 25, 104, 312 and 624 megabytes per second. Normally, all you see indicated on a card is a single Roman numeral, with most modern SD cards being labelled 1 or 2 to indicate they have either a UHS-1 or UHS-2 bus interface. Note that here, UHS again stands for ultra-high speed, but that an SD card's bus interface specification is entirely distinct from its UHS speed class. SD cards with either a high-speed or UHS-1 bus interface communicate data over one row of pins. However, to achieve higher data transfer speeds, UHS-2 and UHS-3 cards require a second row of connectors. This means that it's very easy to distinguish cards with a slower or faster bus interface just by turning them over. In practice today, if an SD card has two rows of pins, it has a UHS-2 bus interface. Although the faster UHS-3 standard, which uses the same pinout, was announced in February 2017, UHS-3 cards and devices have either not made it to market or are exceedingly rare and in hiding. UHS-3 is now also very unlikely to go mainstream, as in June 2018 a new standard was announced called SD Express. This again will have two rows of pins, with the upper one maintaining a UHS-1 bus interface for backwards compatibility, and the lower row of pins offering a PCIe Gen 3 bus interface with NVMe protocols. The latter promises a maximum data transfer speed of 985 megabytes per second. SD Express SD cards will therefore be able to be used in the place of regular SSDs with potentially major implications for the size and design of many different categories of computer and IoT device. Already, many single board computers store their operating system on an SD card, and this may be increasingly common in the future. Today, like many people, I do most of my video work using UHS-1 SD cards, with my go-to cards being the 64 or 128GB SanDisk Extreme Pro models. However, for this video, I thought I'd test out the UHS-2 version of a 64GB card to experience the performance improvement. And if we now exchange out this 128GB UHS-1 card for this new 64GB UHS-2 card, and we then uh, just flick these over, you can see we've got the one row of pins on the UHS-1 card and the two rows of pins on the UHS-2 card, which allows it to operate faster. But it's important to stress that this card will only operate at higher speeds if it's using a device that's also got a UHS-2 interface and which can make use of the second row of pins. And in this context, I know that my Blackmagic Design Video Assist 4K that I use for HDMI recording has got a UHS-2 interface. And to test out the cards on a PC and to run some speed tests, I've also purchased this uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro UHS-2 card reader. So I'm going to just uh, open this thing up. There we are, and uh, put in a card and uh, assess some uh, relative UHS-1 and UHS-2 performance. So, here we are in Windows on my laptop. I've currently got the UHS-1 card plugged in. And as you can see, I've run up Crystal Disk Mark and we've got selected the uh, UHS-1 card D drive here as the test device. So let's run all the tests. 
And uh, there we are. And the headlines here are the read and write figures for very large files, which are clearly what matter if we're actually using cars for, for video work. And as we can see, 93.5 megabytes a second read and 76.5 megabytes a second write. So let's use the magic of filmmaking to put those onto one side of the screen and repeat this test for the UHS-2 card. And uh, there we are. And as we can see the headline here is we've got almost twice the performance in terms of a read speed and almost two and a half times the performance or something like that in terms of write speed. So clearly we have got significantly better performance with the UHS-2 card which will allow, for example, certain video recording devices to uh, record video with a much higher data rate. Now, a second test I want to run is copying data from each of these cards back to an SSD on a PC, because that's a very real world test. And so what I've got set up here is on each of the cards, one file which has been recorded on the Blackmagic Design Video Assist 4K, a standard video file about four and a half gigabytes in size. So by the magic of filmmaking, I'm going to start off the paste on both of these at the same point in time, and we'll see how fast they go. We can see clearly straight away the UHS-2 card is going to win. It's just by a question of how much, but uh, we'll speed on through to the interesting bits. And there we are, the OHS2 card has finished in 21.7 seconds, that's about 215.5 megabytes a second. But not to be outdone, we then get the OHS1 card finishing in 54.3 seconds, which is 86.1 megabytes a second. But the one thing I haven't mentioned so far is the relative price of these two cards. And in late February 2020, the UHS-1 64GB card costs $17.99 or £17.49, whilst the UHS-2 card costs $92.80 or £87.99. Whether the extra cost is worth it will of course depend on your use scenario, but I suspect that for quite some time, few people will be prepared to pay for SD card interfaces faster than UHS-1. SD cards have evolved very significantly over the past 20 years, and with their speed and capacity set to further increase, they should be around for another decade or more. In a forthcoming video, I'm going to be testing out all of these micro SD cards to see which one works best as a boot drive in a single board computer. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I hope to talk to you again very soon.